But as we have, um, we've got so many that we are praying for, and so many within our uh, church family, so many that are hurting, so many different people that we have lifted up in prayer, and so many people that need healing. Uh, I, I love this, this series that we're going through on the healings of Jesus and the times that he has healed people. And we've talked about several different instances. Of course, we started out uh, with the instance of the, of the man who his friends uh, led him down through the roof. <clears throat> the paralyzed man and we saw that Jesus did so much more than just heal his physical body he he forgave him his sins the second one we looked at was the man who was possessed with the demons and Jesus uh, healed him from the evil that was in his life and the evil that was within his body and then we saw where last week where where Jesus uh, went to Jairus's daughter and, and was delayed on the way and during that time that she died but Jesus still showed his power over death and he demonstrated his power over death long before he had to die on the cross he demonstrated that power over death as he raised her from the dead and, and healed her from death and we see that Jesus has power over so many things now last week as we were talking uh, about the young girl that Jesus healed we got to a point that we skipped over and I said that's a whole nother sermon right there well that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to be talking about the woman who, who hindered Jesus in the middle of his going to heal the young girl. Now, before we get into that, as some of you know, back a few months ago, uh, I had a tooth that broke and I went to the dentist and he had to do a root canal and then he did a filling on the one beside it and when he did, my teeth have not been right ever since. Uh, I have had extreme pain. I have had uh, just a constant pain in my tooth. I've been back and they have ground it and they've adjusted the bite and then they took the filling out and put in a, a temporary filling with medicine in it and then they went back and redone the full filling. And it's not, I don't have the pain that I did at once, that just throbbing pain, but I, it's still not right. I still have pain when I chew on it in certain ways and different things. Uh, and I say that to say this. Not all of our pains and all of our problems are life-threatening or even life-altering. Some of them just, uh, they are really, really painful. They are really, really inconvenient to us, and they distract us. I'll tell you something. When I had that toothache, uh, it was hard to concentrate on anything. It was hard to study for a sermon. It was hard to, to uh, think about eating. Now you see I didn't miss many meals but it was still, there were so many things that were just that, that, that it affected. It, I, was, I was down a lot more. I, I, I was in a worse mood uh, because I was in pain and I had these pains. I wasn't afraid I was going to die. I, I wasn't afraid that, that I was, you know, was going to have some life altering problem from this, uh, but it was inconvenient and it really bothered me and it really hurt me. So as we look at this, I want you to think about the things in your life and the, and the ailments and the problems that you have that are uh, really, really inconvenient. You know, you know you're not going to die from them, but, but they, they bother you. And I want you to see that Jesus today cares about all of those problems, not just the one who was paralyzed and that had changed his whole life. He cares about everything to do with us. So let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and we'll start in verse 25 this morning. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Now in the, in the King James Version that said an issue of blood. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When, Jesus heard, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. 
Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out from him turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your caring and your, your healing and all that you do. And Lord, we just thank you for the fact that you care about us on a personal level. You know us and you know about our ailments and our problems and our hurtings and we know that you care about them. And Lord, we just, we just pray today, Lord, that you would help us to have the faith that it takes to be healed and to be, and to be close to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now this particular woman, and I, you know I've not heard many preachers preach on this because they get to a point when they get to this woman's problem and they, they kind of want to skip over it and, and most men don't want to even talk about it. Uh, but men, none of you all have had this problem. None of you all know what this, problem, what this woman's problem was. And you don't want to. <laughs> But this woman for 12 years had had a, a constant menstrual cycle. And it was a problem. It was a problem for her. And, and, and some of you women may have dealt with something similar to this in, 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 in your life. And, and today we have, we have fixes for it. We have, they have medicines to take. And if that don't work, there's surgeries that can be done. There's so many things that can be done today that was not available back in those days. Uh, but in those days, listen, there was, there was really nothing that could be done. And, and this woman had had this problem. Now, there was a lot of problems came along with this for this woman. I want you to understand that. Um, Along with, with, with just the, uh, the, the blood loss and the, the cramping and the other problems that she had. Listen, she was more than likely anemic. She was low iron, just had all sorts of problems. She was probably, uh, and by most accounts, she was weak and probably had no energy to do anything, didn't feel like doing anything, didn't feel like getting out. But beyond being able to not feel like it, but she wasn't able to. Uh, she was, uh, she had this, this, this problem. Now, I want you to understand, I, I, I looked up in that day what kind of, of remedies because it said that she had suffered with many physicians that old-timey remedies were many times more damaging to you than the symptoms that you had they they wore you out I mean they would they did some crazy things uh, one of the things that 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 they used to do and I don't know where they came up with this, but they would, they would carry the ashes, they would wrap the ashes of an ostrich egg and wrap it in a certain cloth and she had to carry that around with her. That was one of the remedies that, that, that they had. And another one was that they would, they would take, and she would have to drink wine, that they would take and grind up rubber, alum, and garden crocuses and they would grind this up into a powder and put it in wine and she'd have to drink it now somebody explained to me at some point where would where would you come up with something like that where who would have that kind of an idea what kind of a what kind of a sick mind would come up with grinding up crocuses and put, putting in wine and making somebody drink it, or the fact that that ashes of an ostrich egg would would help with this problem? But you got to remember they had a very very limited knowledge of medicine back then, and it was all about uh, a lot of what they would do would be about witchcraft more than more than 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 actual remedies or or something that would actually make a difference and. And this was the kind of things that they would do back in those days. And, and this was what they, she suffered with this. Now you know, uh, 
It might, well, not like today, but, but even back then, every time you went to a physician, every time you went to a witch doctor, every time you went to anybody, you had to pay something. And it said this woman had spent everything that she had had looking for a remedy. She, had, she, was, she was distraught. So here we have this woman who is weak and, 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 and hurting from all the, the blood loss and all the symptoms. But not only that, but she has, she has suffered at the hands of doctors even worse things than what she's already been through. And then she spent all that she had. She has nothing left. So that's where she is physically. But then, I want you to think about this. There was no hiding an issue like this. There was no way to hide it. There was no way to... She was not able to go out into public. She was... Uh, the, they did not have the feminine products back then that they do today, so she was not able to go out into public. People, people would avoid her worse than they would a leper because she was unclean. She was ceremonially unclean. Uh, you, go back to, you go back to the book of Leviticus. Uh, a, a woman that was ministrating, she, was, she, was not, uh, she couldn't be allowed in a temple. She couldn't be allowed. Nobody could touch her. Uh, she, couldn't have, she, she wouldn't be able to have children. She wasn't uh, able to be intimate with anybody. There were so many things that, that this issue brought on her. I mean, not only the physical problems, but the social. She was not allowed in public. Public. She had to stay away from everybody, and everybody, of course, wanted to stay away from her. Can you imagine what it must have been like for this woman? And, and this is not something that just happened for a short period of time. This had been going on for 12 years. Now, I want you to think about something. The, lady, the girl that we talked about last week that this woman interrupted Jesus as he was on his way to, to meet her and on his way to heal this young girl, she was 12 years old. This woman had been dealing with her problem as long as the one that Jesus was helping had been alive. Most people don't put that together, but here's this 12-year-old girl and this woman who has been dealing with a problem, a, 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 a debilitating problem for 12 years of her life. And she's been dealing with this. And, and she knew, though, she had heard that Jesus was coming. She knew that he was coming. Word had already gotten out. Word had gotten around town that who Jesus was. And people knew who he was. And they, and they had a good idea. They, had, they knew that if we could only get to Jesus and get in front of Jesus, that Jesus can heal me. This woman has been ashamed. And this woman has been fearful. And this woman has been put down for 12 years of her life. There was no way that she was going to present herself in front of Jesus. She was ashamed to. She was afraid to. If she tried to present herself in front of Jesus or go to the place that Jesus was teaching or the place that Jesus was healing other people, when, he, when she got there, she would have been pushed aside. Nobody would have let her in. Nobody would have, would have been around her. But she knew, all I've got, to, if I can get to Jesus, if I can get in front of Jesus and have Jesus heal me, that's what she wanted. Now this woman had probably, in 12 years, had learned to hide in a crowd. She had probably learned to hide from people. She knew that, that she would not be accepted and she learned to stay in the background. She learned to stay away from people. And here she knew that Jesus was coming and all I have to do is touch his clothes. Folks, that takes a lot of faith. To, I mean, here Jesus has been going around healing people and every, on every instance that we've seen, Jesus actually did something. He touched them. He spoke to them. He spoke their healing. He, he took them by the hand or, or he, he made a command or he did something and, and he made some sort of an action that healed these people. And, and here this woman had this bright idea. This has not, nobody's seen this before. But if I can just get close to him, if I can just touch his garment. Now I want you to know something. Jesus' garment was nothing special. 
He wasn't wearing some wizard's cloak or something that had some sort of power in it. His, his clothing had no special power except for the fact that it was touching him. Everything came through him. But here, here, everybody else that's been healed by Jesus had to be presented in front of him. He had to take his time and say, I heal you, or I forgive you, or be cast out, or something. He did some sort of an action. But this woman had this idea that all I've got to do is touch him, and she snuck up on him. And she weaved herself through the crowd and got up to where she could touch him. Now... In a crowd, I, I have been in many, many crowds in my life. And if, you, if you're not the kind of person that likes to be in a crowd, or I know people that don't like to be touched. If you're one of those kind of people, let me tell you something. Don't ever go to a UT ball game. Don't ever go to a NASCAR race. Don't ever go to uh, you know, any kind of concert or event. Just don't go. Because I promise you, you will be touched. You will be jostled. You will be, you, you, I, I have been in, in situations where, where you just try to hold hands with the person you're with and just kind of turn sideways and push yourself through a crowd. We, we were down in Knoxville last year. We went down to the, the ETSU-UT football game, uh, Christy and I did. And in the middle of that game, they had a lightning strike. Now, when there is a lightning strike at a college game, they clear the stadium. And they make everybody get out of the stands. And when you get out of the stands, you go into the concourse. And, and there are places that you take 102,000 people and you put them into the concourse. And there's places in the concourse that are not any wider than this aisle here. And you've got all these people that's coming out of this stadium and they're trying to go through that aisle. We saw fights break out. We saw people pushing, people getting knocked into walls. And I'm just trying to make my... Now imagine this. I'm trying to make myself as small as I can. <laughs> To get through that crowd. I promise you, we touched people. It happened. So here is Jesus coming through the town of, most likely he's still in Capernaum, and, and he's coming through town, and the streets of Capernaum are not very wide. They're not as wide as Greenwood Drive out here, I, I can tell you that. They're, they're like a single lane road today. They're, they're really narrow. And Jesus had rock star crowds. Okay? Jesus was the rock star of the day. People followed him. People flocked to him. People, people wanted to be near him. And here he is. He's going through these narrow streets. And people are just flocking around him. And there, there's people out in front of him. There's people behind him. There's people all around him. And as he's moving through the crowd, these people are moving with him. And they're trying to move. Listen, he's getting knocked around. They're getting knocked around. And people just going through the crowd. I remember uh, one of the first big crowds I was ever in was in Nashville uh, at their stadium down there or at their, um, at Vanderbilt at their Coliseum or their, uh, I guess their basketball arena. We went down there for YEC, that Youth Evangelism Conference through the Tennessee Baptist. And I was about 12 years old and I went down with our, our uh, pastor at the time and and several other adults, but uh, he was actually a pastor here before he came down there. It was, it was Tom Straka. Some of you may have known him. Uh, but he, he was down there with us, and, and, and we're getting ready to go through this huge crowd. And I mean, this is one of the first times I've ever been in a big crowd, and there's thousands and thousands of people. And I remember him telling me, take your wallet out of your back pocket and put it in your front pocket. And I said, why? He said, because you are going to be touched by so many people. You're going to go through such a crowd that if, if it was in your back pocket, you would never feel if somebody took it out. I never thought about that. I'm going to, you're going to be, you're, you, people's going to be knocking you around and, and, and you, and every time that somebody does pick pockets or something, they teach them to bump into somebody so that you don't notice them taking your wallet. And I, and I never thought about that. That was one of the first times I was ever in a big crowd. And, and it, it made me realize that here Jesus is, as he's going through this crowd, that he would not feel. You couldn't feel somebody just touch you for a certain reason. I mean, you, you could come up to somebody in a crowd and tap them on the shoulder wanting to get their attention. They wouldn't know it. 
because they're getting jostled around. That's just the way it is in a crowd. But here's Jesus as he's walking through this crowd and being pushed and shoved. And no, he's probably not, but everybody around him is. Uh, everybody's trying to get close to him, so they're bumping into him and everything else. And all of a sudden, he stops and said, Who touched me? The disciples thought he was crazy. I mean, you see him here. Master, look around you at this, at this huge group of people, at this throng, and, and how can you ask, who touched me? There's a multitude of people. How can you even ask that? I want you to realize something. Jesus didn't need to ask, who touched me? Jesus knew this woman's problem before, she, before he ever entered town. He knew before he ever got off the boat when Jairus came to him, he knew before he got off the boat that this woman was going to touch him and what her problem was and why she was going to be there and when she was going to be there and how she was going to be there. He knew all of that. So when she touched him, he already knew that she was going to. He already knew why she was going to. So why did he ask the question? I mean, he stopped the whole throng of people and stopped everybody and said, Who touched me? He did this to show people. Number one, I recognize this woman. I, rec I can recognize that somebody needs my healing. I recognize that, that there is somebody in need. That was number one. He wanted people to realize that he recognized her problem. Folks, today, there's so many people out there that just, they, they, they ask the question, why? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Does God not understand? Let me tell you something. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows what everybody's going through. He recognizes the problem. And he wanted everybody to realize that. So he recognized her problem. Number two, he wanted to show them not only that he recognized, but that he cared. There, there are people around us that, that when we hurt, we think, you know, we, like I said, we ask the question, why? Jesus not only recognizes your problem, but he cares about your problem. He cares what you're going through. And, and uh, listen, sometimes it may seem like he don't. There are going to be times in your life that you think that Jesus, that, that God just don't, just don't care and he just left me out here on my own. But listen, he cares. And he showed this woman that he cared. You know what? Jesus could have simply, after it said that as soon as she touched his garment, the flow of blood stopped and she felt within her that she was healed. Jesus did not need to stop. He could have continued on his way to Jairus' house and the woman was already healed. She was healed the moment she touched him. It says so. But Jesus still stopped. It was to let that woman know that he loved her, he cared about her, he knew about her, but it was also to let the crowd know that he cared about every single one and every single problem. And it said that when he, when he stopped and he asked her that, that she stopped and she fell down before him. Now we saw Jairus when, when Jesus got off the boat last week. Jairus came and he fell down before him. And this was a man who had another reason. He had a reason to hide that he was, that he was coming to Jesus. And that was because he was a religious leader. And he tried to hide it. Well here this woman tries to hide it for a whole different reason. But yet when Jesus turns around, she came and once again fell before him. Listen, you can try your best to hide from Jesus. You can try your best to hide from the... the the fact that you need Jesus but it's going to come down at some point you're going to have to fall down before Jesus you're going to have to fall before him and tell him your problems and and cry out to him and that's what this woman did she, even though she was already healed when Jesus stopped she came she fell down to him 
Not only did he show that he cared about her, that he loved her, and that he recognized her problem, but he also received the glory from God. He received, and God received glory for the healing. If Jesus had just went on, this woman would have known that she had been healed, but nobody else would have. Nobody else would have seen what God had done and what Jesus did to this woman. And he had to demonstrate, folks, we can't, we can't cry out to Jesus in private. We can't, we can't hide. Jesus said, bring your problems. Bring them to me. And, and we see uh, a couple weeks ago when we, when we anointed uh, Jenny and, and uh, Barbara, we, we saw that, uh, that the Bible tells us, bring your problems. Those who are sick, those who are hurting, bring your problems to the elders. Bring your problems. You can't hide the things. This woman bowed down before Jesus. She laid it out there and she told everybody, she told everybody that was around, this is my issue. This has been my problem. But now, I am healed. Now, I am made whole. Jesus looked at her. And he said, your faith, your faith has made you well. Now, we've talked, um, we talked Wednesday night as we're going through uh, Pursuing holiness. This is a little commercial plug here. We're going through pr pursuing holiness on Wednesday night, and it's out of the book of James. Uh, but this past Wednesday, we talked about the fact that that you can't have faith without works. Now, this woman, it said that she believed that Jesus could heal her, and that she had faith that Jesus could heal her. Let me ask you this. If she had just sat at home and said, I believe that Jesus will heal me, and I have faith that Jesus can heal me, and just stayed at home, do you think she'd have been healed? Did she really have the faith if she just, just stayed home? You see, that, th this is why James says, Show me your faith without your works can't do it. You can't show the world and you can't, can't show God that you have faith if you don't have works. But then he said, I will show you my faith through my works. So this woman, she truly, truly believed in Jesus. So therefore she got up and she got out and she put away all her inhibitions and all the things that held her back and all of her discomfort. Listen, we talked to, we've talked many times about the fact that as Christians, we've got to get out of our comfort zone and we've got to move past what we are comfortable with. Here is a lady that was full of shame and full of embarrassment. And, and listen, her comfort zone said, stay at home. But yet, because of her faith and because of her belief in Jesus Christ, she got up and got out of her comfort zone and went to Jesus and followed after Jesus. And she caught up to Jesus through the crowd and touched him and was made whole. She was made well because she had the faith to come to Jesus. Let me tell you something. You can't do nothing and claim your faith in Jesus. You see, faith in Jesus. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that our works save us. I'm not saying that, that anything like that. What I'm saying is that our faith will produce works. Our faith will, will, will inspire us. Our faith will make us get up and go. Our faith will make us. We can't just pray for the lost and then not go talk to them. We can't. Because that's what Jesus tells us to do. Go. See, we, I, I have faith that Jesus will heal or will, will save the lost. But in order to, to, to show my faith that he will, I've got to go and witness to him, right? The same thing here. This woman actually had to get up and, and move toward Jesus. Folks, as we look at faith, Hebrews chapter 11 which is known as the faith chapter. It tells us, 
In verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. We see this and we see that this woman, she had a hope. She had a hope that Jesus could heal her. She believed wholeheartedly that Jesus could heal her. It was, it, but she hadn't seen it. There was no evidence. There was nowhere else that Jesus had healed anybody by them touching his clothes. But it was a hope that she had. It was a belief that she had. That she was willing to put herself out there. Folks, this morning as we look at, at our faith and we look at the way that Jesus healed this woman. And we have all have problems. Jesus expects us to bring them to him. Not just pray about them, not just lift them up, but He wants us to do something. He wants us to, to show our faith. He wants us to be up and telling people. He wants us to share our problems. When we have, when we have issues, He wants us to come to church and share it with others. He wants us to call for those, uh, the elders. He wants us to do something about it. Listen, there's nothing wrong with praying, but God wants us to help others. He wants us to be a part. He wants us to get up and get out. This woman did that. She showed her faith. And because of that, she was healed. This morning, I ask you, how are you showing your faith? How are you showing the world that you have faith? Are you stepping out of your comfort zone? Are you moving beyond what you feel comfortable with? Have you come to Jesus to begin with? This woman, because of her faith, she knew that she had to come to Jesus. Our first step at, at, to be a Christian means that we've got to just, we've got to come to Him. We've got to come and reach out desiring to have His touch. You know, just, the, just touching the hem of His garment is all it takes. He has so much power that even the threads of His clothes can heal. Folks, the first thing we've got to be healed of is our sin. The first thing we've got to be healed of is our lostness. And if you have never known Jesus, if you've never come to Him, take that step of faith. Get out of your comfort zone and show the faith that you have and come to Jesus. Reach out to Him because He wants your touch. He wants you to try to touch Him. But listen, when you reach out to touch Him, He will touch you. There's a reason that I picked the songs that we had today. Faith is the victory. I know some of you didn't know it, but faith is the victory. And Jesus touched me. Why? I reached out to him, but he made up the difference. We've got to reach out first. That's the first step of faith, and that's what this woman did. If you've never done that this morning, today is your opportunity. Secondly, are you hurting? Is there something in your life, something that, you, that has been dragging you down? It don't have to even be physical. It can be, it can be mental. It can be something that, something that uh, you know, social, something that's in your family, something that, that is, is bothering you on, on the inside. Whatever is hurting you, have you shared it with others? Have you, have you come to Jesus with you? Have you asked others to pray? Have you, have you lifted it up to Jesus, stepped out of the comfort zone and said, Jesus, I need your touch. Whatever your need is this morning, bring it to Jesus. Come to Him. Reach out to Him. I promise you, He knows your need. All you have to do take the first step of reach. Show your faith and He will come to you. As we stand this morning,